We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today, we are going to be talking about whether or not these three watch brands are making a comeback. It's fair to say that these three watch brands, while they have been popular in the past, are not necessarily that popular today. But I want to talk also about kind of why they might be coming more popular or maybe even a little bit less if it is at all possible. But first, I'd like to thank you for coming back for another episode. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to leave in the comments below things you'd like to see in future videos. Of course, this video is inspired from a viewer like you. I I, I feel like I'm you know, talking part of the PBS channel if you're familiar with that. Um, I digress. But anyways, don't forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. It really does help a lot. And I want to mention something about a party. So I did another video where I talked about exclusive watch parties. Um, there were some people that had some interesting responses, comments, things like that. And I it kind of got the gears moving in my head, the wheels turning, and I thought, hey, why don't we th throw together a Delray watch party where customers and viewers and, you know, people in the industry that we know can all come together and have a great night centered around watches. So what do you guys think about throwing one of these parties? I have some interesting venues in mind, a lot of great events, a lot of brands that I can bring in, a lot of interesting people. Obviously, Federico and myself will be there. A lot of collectors will come. It will be in South Florida. It will probably be in the Fort Lauderdale area, so people in North Florida and Central can drive down, and those coming from the Miami area can come up as well. And of course, people are welcome from all over the world. So leave in the comments below if this is something that interests you. We need to get enough people interested to actually put this on to the kind of level that I want to get this going at. I don't want this to be kind of just a little meetup. I want this to be grand, grandiose, and actually a really great time with a lot of cool and interesting things and people. So leave in the comments below if this is something you'd like to see happen. Let's jump into these brands. So in the watch industry, things change, right? Some brands become more popular. Some other brands become less popular. It just, you know, just depends kind of where the market's at, advertising, all of that, and kind of where the collector's revolve, center, and congregate around which brands. And so the first brand that I want to talk about is Bell & Ross. Now, in the world of watches, stainless steel sports watches are just in right now. And while Bell & Ross does make stainless steel watches, and they have since they were basically founded just a short time ago, they don't really have a lot of stainless steel sports watches with a full bracelet that kind of follow that Genta-esque design until now. Now what we have is Bell & Ross releasing a watch called the BR05, and this is their kind of take on the whole Genta, AP, Nautilus, Paddock kind of craze that's going on right now. And, you know, a lot of the brands out there, they do it. Gerard Perigo, AP, you know, even some of the lesser known brands like Concord, for example, we have a Concord on our website that looks just like something uh, that AP would release or even, you know, one of the others that makes that typical design you'd see right here. Um, so everyone's doing it. Now Bell and Ross is doing it, but they have kind of a dial that you would see on some of their other models like the Aviator and many of the other models that they have in circulation, you know, that kind of icon or albeit a short-lived iconic dial. You'll see what I mean when you look at the dial if you're not familiar with Bell & Ross. And so do I think that this is going to kind of revitalize Bell & Ross? Well, if we look through the history of Bell & Ross, they've really never jumped on a particular bandwagon. You know, for that kind of square watch, they kind of paved the way for that aeronautical gauge type instrument watch. Others have done things similar, but they really created that square watch and that's what they're known for. When they jump on something like this with a bandwagon, personally, I don't think it's going to be very successful. And it's probably, in my opinion, because of the way that they don't fully do it, right? So you have Bell & Ross, but there doesn't seem to be a real strong Bell & Ross collector community. Now, inside of the collector community, there are some particular models of Bell & Ross that get collected very frequently among, I guess you'd call them Bell & Ross collectors, like the Skull Collection. They've got a few different skulls, and people are really drawn to that for whatever reason. Um, but when you look at Bell & Ross as a whole, there's not a strong collector community. They were hot for a while, they had people drawn to them, but it's not like some other brands. 
And being that they mixed kind of what they did with their other models with this BR05, and they didn't fully take on that Genta design, you can see the picture of the BR05 here, and you, and you can also compare it to something like what Gerard Perigo does with their Laureato, which is probably their most successful watch in current uh, production lineup. And you see, of course, AP with Royal Oak and the other Genta or Genta-inspired designs, the IWC Ingenieur. They don't fully take on that integrated bracelet Genta-esque design. So when people are kind of drawn to that design, you know, there's a very specific shape and way that the watch is laid out and they just don't fully do it. And considering this watch is $5,000 retail or almost 5,000 retail, on a bracelet, a little bit less on a strap, rubber or leather, I think it's really difficult for someone to pay retail price for this type of watch from a brand that's traditionally sold at 80% off on, on in the gray market. So what do you guys think about Bell & Ross? Do you think they're coming back? Do you think the BR05 is really going to lead the charge for Bell & Ross? I don't, but I wanna hear what you have to say about the current Bell & Ross lineup, including the B05 in the comments below. Next, we have Longines. Now, do I think Longines is making a comeback? Well, it depends how you look at it. So first, I'd like to say that Longines is a brand that really has been on the back burner. Now, in the earlier times, 50s and 60s, we're talking vintage, you know, in the history, Longines really was viewed as a much higher watch than it is today. Um, they, there was higher quality, perceive with the watch brand than where it is in the market today. They really haven't stayed up market. You know, in earlier times in the history of Longines, when they were really competing more against Rolex and Omega, there were just less competitors in the market. Now, when we're talking about watches, there are so many brands, so many micro brands. I did a video about micro brands and also about brands that are pushing the envelope of quality. It can be difficult for a brand like this to really stay not only relevant, but to keep their quality up. So Longines for quite a period of time decided to kind of scale back the quality and kind of serve a certain uh, entry to to lower mid-level market and start making partnerships with uh, you know the equestrian community and to be honest with you there's only so many people that are involved in that community and they're typically wearing higher echelon watch brands so it, it was a bit of a confusing partnership and even to this day I don't totally understand why they do it. Perhaps it's because they'd like to be perceived a little bit upmarket in those outside of that community. I'm not sure. If you have any speculation, leave in the comments below once again. But now what we see is I believe Longines is really pushing up the quality of their watches. When we look at something like they have their master collection, here's a picture here. You know, the retail price is $2,000, but you can get them pre-owned or gray market maybe half price, maybe a little bit more, just depending on what you find at the time. And when you handle this watch, you can it really does feel like they've pushed up the quality from 10, 15 years ago. Now, this is really something you can only tell by handling the watch. And so I would recommend, you know, stopping into a, a Longines store, an authorized dealer, playing with some of their watches. When we talk about their heritage line, for example, something like the Legend Diver and the Skin Diver, Sure, they're vintage inspired, you know, based on historical models and obviously the vintage <laughs> watch feel and form and function, but they really are higher quality than I would expect from the brand. And it's only based on kind of their perceived level of quality in the market. And when you have other brands that just drive home a little bit more the quality and also do a better job at kind of having collectors focus on them and kind of center the brand inside of watch collector communities like some of the other brands do very well. I think it, it, it's just can be a little bit deceiving and in their current production lineup, I think there's a lot of quality there. So in the coming years, I'm pretty interested to see what Longines can actually do if they can change their marketing a little bit more to get more people that are in the watch geek community, the watch collector community to be interested in a little bit less of the casual wearers that tend to not really care about the subtleties of the watch. What do you think about Longines current day production compared to historical? Leave in the comments below. But also to wrap this up, I don't know totally if Longines is making a comeback, but their quality in production, I think certainly is 
alluding to this. And lastly, I want to talk about a brand called Speak Marin, or otherwise known as Peter Speak Marin. Now, in watches, in watchmaking, in horology, there are some brands, especially smaller brands, that start and they revolve around a watchmaker or a master watchmaker, and that's exactly what happened with this brand. So the brand was founded by a master watchmaker called Peter Speak Marin, and basically he was known for creating high-end compl complications for a movement manufacturer, Renaud, which is now part of Audemars Piguet. And in 2002, he releases a watch line and it revolves around his master watchmaking, the things he's, he's done and kind of the notoriety he's built, kind of being a master watchmaker and very technical and very good at what he did and what he still does today, though not with the brand, because... In 2017, he ultimately sold his shares of the brand. And in the watchmaking community, this is typically a kiss of death. Now you see it with Roger Dubuis, you see it with Daniel Roth. When the watchmaker is removed from the brand, oftentimes things can go south because what drew watch collectors, right? These are brands that watch collectors want to be wearing. Um, what drew them to the brand was the watchmaker, the master watchmaker, that whole history and story. If it's a young brand, you can't really have much more history than the actual watchmaker. And when you take that guy and you remove them, well, now it's a little bit less interesting to those that really know about these watches and all of that. You know, the, the most you know, discerning of collectors, I guess you could put it. And so in when 2017, he left, then we saw the brand kind of fall down a little bit. And then all of a sudden, all of these watches were dumped on the market in one big swoop at huge discounts. Even on our website right now, delraywatch.com, you can see a, a, a very nice example of a Peter Speak Marin from when he was with the brand. And you feel the watch, it's much higher quality than you would imagine for the price, but because you know they dumped so many of these watches on the market during a rebranding phase, much like Breitling did, though on a smaller scale, there, some great buys can be had. And so now what you see is the company the, and, and the investors and the shareholders kind of revitalizing the brand. There was a, a show in Miami um, somewhat recently, maybe this was eight months ago, and it was Watches and Wonders Miami, and basically they were really, uh, Peter Speak Marin, or just Speak Marin now, the brand was really being pushed with their two, two new lines, and they have an academic and an open work. Now, they've really consolidated the product lineup, and I think that the watches really do look attractive, and the quality is there, but I'm just not too sure if they're going to be able to successfully move their brand away from that person while still keeping the watchmaker's name on the brand and still attract watch collectors because this is not a brand that's going to be worn by casual wearers. No one's going to walk in to anywhere and buy a Speak Marin without knowing anything about the brand. But then when they know the watchmaker's gone, you know, it's going to be the same situation as the Roger Dubuis. You have to know about the movement. And while these, these watches, they do look very nice, I can't say necessarily that they are holding true to the original vision of the brand. So do I think Speak Marin is making a comeback? No, I don't think they are. Are they trying? Yes, they certainly are. They're consolidating the product lineup and they're doing interesting things with the marketing. You can see it on their website. But, uh, you know, there's so few of these things out there. They're more entry-level pieces outside of their high-end horology lineup. Don't seem to be trading very well. There seems to be a lot of pushing of these things on the gray market, the few that are circulating around. And there's ultimately not a lot of news and buzz on the forums, even on different blogs and news platforms, no one's talking about these watches. And so I don't see how you can make a comeback in anything, let alone watches, if no one is talking about you. And even if you made this comeback, whatever that means exactly, like who's going to know about it, right? We're talking about this, but no one else is. So I don't know. If you're a fan of Speak Marin or Peter Speak Marin, also leave in the comments below. I personally like their designs currently, and I especially like their designs in their business before, but not sold on the future of the brand. But what that means for us, watch guys on the internet is great deals on good watches, and I am all about that for sure. So guys, what do you think? Um, hopefully you enjoyed some of these brands. 
I know that some of you really like the BR05. If you love that, leave the comments below. Do not forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And remember the party. If you're interested in this party, please leave in the comments below because you know without your support, we're not gonna have this, but I know so many people have already reached out to us. So leave in the comments below if you want this to happen and you will come to South Florida for it. Thanks guys. You have been chatting with John P. Ciao.